Non, monsieur. We did not need the Americans to win World War I. Florian, you are wrong. World War I was won because the Americans joined in and brought tanks and advanced technologies with them. Monsieur Jardin, you are wrong. Tanks were produced by the thousands by Renault at the, towards the end of World War I in France and used in mass mechanized offensive. Madame Toastmasters, fellow members, and most welcome guests. I was 16 years old when this exchange happened between me and my history teacher of the time, Mr. Jardin. And already back then, I had strong opinion and a very strong interest in history. And I felt bold enough to challenge my history teacher on more than, uh, more than one occasion at times. And to this day, I still cherish this interest. Why? Because understanding history, knowing it, knowing deep history, going scratching below the surface, helps us understand the present world and prepare for the future. The world of 1914 was in many respects quite similar to today's one. If you'd lived back then, you would have been living in a globalized world when one did not need a passport to go all the way to the far east of Russia or to the far west of America without a passport or a visa. You could order exotic goods from China using telegraphs of the mail service, or you could invest your shares and your earned money in Argentina to build the railways there. A global world and a global community that was growing ever closer together. And World War I shattered all of this, all of this gone in an instant. Some, some say that maybe the world would have been very different had Franz Ferdinand Carr taken a different turn, that World War I was avoidable. But I disagree. It was in many respects unavoidable, as conflict almost always arises when rising powers seek to challenge the established order. The German Empire, the Kaiserreich, was the rising power of its day, the China of its day. Its economy was booming and really and powering ahead in new and innovative fields like chemistry. Its, its politicians aspired for a place in the sun for an empire of their own, just like the French and the British one, for dominating Central and Eastern Europe, because after all, Germany's population was growing fast and needed space. German philosophers even came up with concept of the Kultur, of a Kultur, a new rising force that would sweep aside what they called the Anglo-French civilization, a stale and stodgy, with its stale and stodgy tradition. And this is why I remember the sacrifices of World War I, the sacrifices on the front line that enabled us to achieve victory. The trenches on the Western Front, mechanized warfare, mechanized and industrial warfare brought to, brought to the fore. A lunar landscape with mud, cockroaches, lice, rats, and the stench of death and rotting bodies. Air thick with poisonous gas, chlorine, phosgene, and mustard, and mustard gas. And on this hell on earth, epic battles took place that would define the fate of Europe and the fate of the world. I take immense pride in the, uh, in the sacrifices that our countries made. To this day, I'm still in the how of our France, a country that lost its best industrial areas to the invading Germans, somehow managed to field 8 million men in the field and equip them with the largest air force and the largest tank force that, were, that existed on earth by the end of the war. So large, in fact, that the Americans had to buy equipments from us a testament of what can be possible in times of crisis and what can be possible when all nations have to fight together towards a common goal. And 
kind of like these German philosophers, I do believe that there was such a thing as an Anglo-French civilization fighting in the trenches as one. A civilization whose first name is, the, is liberty, coming from the Enlightenment, whose middle name is, ingenuity, is ingenuity, invented in the flames of the Industrial Revolution, and whose last name is chivalry, coming from the heraldic and the chivalrous traditions of the Middle, of the middle Ages. A civilization that gave it all and fought and won in World War I. And I remember that. I remember that thanks to these efforts, great nations like Poland could arise like Phoenix from the ashes and be free again. But I also remember the failure of the post-war world, that somehow what the war was won, but the peace was lost. The Versailles Treaty was a mess of contradiction and a treaty that was almost unenforceable that all parties to the treaty violated it in short orders a couple of a couple of years afterwards i also remember the disunity that followed between the former allies between france and britain bickering bickering again like in old times over patches of sand in the middle east that nobody cared about i remember the evil that arise 20 years later because of the failure to win the peace, or perhaps the failure to win a decisive victory in World War I because of the impreparation that was a feature of France and the UK in 1914. To me, history can help us understand the present and prepare for the future. And it is important to remember our conflicts arose and the, and the causes of it. But I also remember, and I'm grateful for the sacrifices of, of the millions, which I would have happily joined on the field, on, on the field of glory had I been of age myself, that fundamentally sometimes, if we as nation want to remain free and the master of our own destiny and not the pounds of some Kaiser rising in Berlin, we must often always remember that civis patsem parabellum, if you want peace, you must always prepare for war. Madame Toastmaster. <laughs>